Resuming debate, the reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for Cowichan Malahat Langford. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And uh, before I begin, I just wish to notify you that I'll be splitting my time with the Honourable Member for Windsor West. Madam Speaker, um, when I look at this bill and I, I've examined some of the debate that's been surrounding it, you know, I, I think about some of the Liberals' key messaging points that they've used over the last two years. Uh, specifically how they like to talk a lot about uh, helping the middle class and those working hard to join it. However, when we look at some of the measures that are contained within Bill C-49, I believe that some of these measures are indeed designed to help the corporate class and not the middle class. I want to concentrate my speech, Madam Speaker, because to, to do a 10-minute speech on uh, such an expansive bill is, is near impossible to give it the detail that it deserves. Uh, but there are a few key areas that I wish to touch on which I believe have incredible significance for constituents that I represent and indeed many Canadians across this great country. Now, the principal amendments that are proposed in this bill that we have opposed, and uh, I have to give great credit to my colleague from Trois-Rivières for his incredible work on the Transport Committee and the way he has informed our caucus on uh, the work he's doing and so on and so forth. Uh, he did a lot of great work on this bill and attempted to, to shift it, to amend it, to change it, to make it more amenable. But as we can see, those efforts came to naught when the Liberal-dominated committee chose to reject them. Now, the, the first one is the arrangements, because this bill uh, amends the Transportation Act to give the Minister of Transport to power or the power to approve joint venture arrangements between airlines, even if the Commissioner of Competition finds that the arrangement is anti-competitive and could increase the price of airline tickets. So again, a measure that is not really designed to help middle-class Canadians who will have to suffer through this if prices are increased. Next is the Transportation Act is amended to increase the limit on foreign ownership of Canadian airlines from 25% to 49%, and I, I believe there was even a study that was cited on, the, on Transport Canada's website which showed that this would have absolutely zero effect on increasing competitiveness of Canadian airlines. So we have to wonder why that measure is in there. The other point, Madam Speaker, is the amendments to the Railway Safety Act, which will force railway companies to use video and voice recorders and of course, the attempt at creating some sort of a passenger bill of rights where the Canadian Transportation Agency is ordered to propose and make regulations to establish a new passenger rights regime. And indeed, this last one, uh, this last issue is one that is very near and dear to our caucus. We, we have had several members over previous parliaments who have fought long and hard for a passenger bill of rights, who have sought to codify it in private members' bills. And uh, so we are glad to at least see the attempt, but certainly unhappy with the end result. So this bill primarily protects the interests of foreign investors, and it does violate the right to privacy and workers' rights, so specifically with respect to railway workers. And we are certainly in favor of improving the rights of air travelers and protections for grain shippers. But we want to call on the government, and we, indeed we have called on the government, to separate those specific measures out of this omnibus bill so they could be studied as separate pieces of legislation and passed into law. I think the government side could have found uh, a lot of cooperation from the Conservatives and the NDP if, if those had been left as standalone bills to, to examine them in the detail that they deserve. Now, we opposed Bill C-49 at second reading. Uh, and, and certainly made our attempts to, to amend the bill uh, during committee. Um, and many amendments were put forward by both the Conservatives and, and the NDP, but ultimately uh, many of them did not make it. We made amendments specifically to establish f far more concrete air passenger protection and compensation measures and make the inter-switching routes more accessible to grain farmers and protect the labour rights of train conductors which were all rejected by Liberal members of Parliament. Now, Madam Speaker, if I'm to talk about the joint venture agreement between airlines, uh, currently the Commissioner of Competition uh, has the power to determine whether these joint venture arrangements are anti-competitive and whether to apply the Competition Tribunal. And 
it, it gives me a uh, great pause uh, to, to now know that the minister is in fact going to have final power over these measures because, you know, the bureaucracy is supposed to be sort of nonpartisan and not influenced by outside events, but cabinet, cabinet is lobbied extensively by many different companies and private interest groups. And we have seen in, in this government and in previous governments that when corporations try to bend the ear of government, uh, legislation is changed sometimes in their favor. And to give the minister this kind of power, a person who can be lobbied by industry and uh, perhaps which gets a greater voice than the average Canadian citizen does, that, that gives me some cause for concern. So if Air Canada proposed an arrangement to merge its operations with uh, those of an American company, even if the commissioner were to find that that agreement lessens competition among airlines and increases ticket prices for passengers, the minister could still approve that arrangement. And that's something that we, we are quite concerned with. Madam Speaker, with the amendments to the Railway Safety Act, uh, Bill C-49 is going to force railway companies to fit their locomotives with video and voice recorders. The government wants us to believe that this measure is going to improve rail safety, uh, but we're worried that Canadian National and Canadian Pacific could use this information to discipline their employees and measure their productivity. Um, we believe the bill is, is far too vague and does not specify how the private information of train conductors will be accessed, collected, and used by the minister and the railway companies. And so we did propose amendments to limit the use of these video and voice recorders to the Transportation Safety Board. And, and of course, that was rejected by the Liberals. And we, are concerns, we have concerns that this may violate those workers' charter protections, specifically under Section 8 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Now, uh, the Teamsters, the Vice President of the Teamsters Canada Rail Conference uh, stated, and I quote Madam Speaker, that we think the bill in its present form is contrary to our rights as Canadians. To exempt 16,000 railroaders from PIPEDA, we believe is not appropriate, and this legislation would call for a specific exemption for the purpose of our employers, the people who have been found to foster a culture of fear, to watch. We have a problem with that. Now, Madam Speaker, to move on uh, to the part which I think has uh, the most significance for, for people all across Canada is, is this, this venture to try and establish some sort of a rights regime for passengers. Um, now, in the previous Parliament, uh, the NDP introduced Bill C-459, which codified many of these measures and put them explicitly into an act, and I believe which was a far stronger effort than what we see in Bill C-49. Because in Bill C-49, the measures contained in this bill, Madam Speaker, give the minister the power to make regulations. And regulations uh, can be well and good for certain measures. I think in, for certain pieces of legislation, uh, it's agreeable that we want to have the minister to, to have that leeway to, to change rights and so on. But again, uh, we have to raise our concerns that if, if, if airline companies start lobbying the minister really hard on these, how are the regulations going to eventually turn out? Are the regulations going to start benefiting airline companies or are they really honestly going to be on the side of the passengers themselves? And that's why we feel that you know, codifying these in an actual bill rather than leaving them to regulations would have been a far stronger measure. And you know, if it, my concerns here are not unjustified with respect to Air Canada. You know, I'd like to remind members in this house when uh, we were busy debating Bill C-10, and uh, that was the government's attempt to legislate outsourcing for Air Canada, an amendment to the Air Canada Participation Act. And uh, you know, we, we saw that Air Canada definitely had the ear of the government during that time. They, uh, they, they brought forward a bill that specifically benefited that company, and it left many workers out in the cold and, and gave Canada, Air Canada that ability to outsource jobs if it so wish. So, Madam Speaker, I uh, see that my time is drawing to an end, and so I think I will conclude there just by saying that, you know, um, half measures are not what we were expecting after this length of time. Two years have passed, 
We would like to see uh, some greater efforts in many of these areas and are disappointed that this bill is the actual final result. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions and comments? The Honourable me Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the, uh, the member for, uh, for his comments on, uh, on C-49. You know, Madam Speaker, for, for too long, the transportation industry has worked under the, really the cloak of darkness, and we, they have not been as accountable, as transparent as consumers would like, as uh, those in industry would like to see. We want to ensure that, uh, that those numbers, those standards are set that there are standards for, uh, for passengers, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, so that uh, for, for the airlines, for the, the rail industry, to ensure that we can hold them to account. And uh, right now, that's not possible. Right now, we hear anecdotally that people get bumped, that things are not working well with the rail, that there's not the competition that we want to see, but it's all anecdotal. So, Madam Speaker, what we want to do is make sure that we, we leave that darkness we bring, shine the light on, on our transportation uh, industry and, and bring forward those standards and, and then be able to share those and make those public for consumers. Does the member think that that would be a wise thing to do to be able to bring accountability and transparency to our transportation industry? Honourable Member for Cowich and Malahat Langford. Well, of course, Madam Speaker. I mean, I don't think uh, anyone in this House can disagree with that laudable goal. Unfortunately, we, we simply don't see that level of detail in this bill, Madam Speaker. We, we do see a lot of words in this bill which authorize the minister to make regulations. I mean, I think the problem is that we have all known for quite some time what the problem is. The stories that passengers have with regards to their experiences on airlines, being stuck in airports, being stuck on the tarpac, tarmac, they, these have happened continuously over many years now. We know what the problem is, and in a previous parliament, we, is that we brought forward suggestions for concrete proposals, something that could have been codified rather than left to a regulatory environment, because when this bill gets passed, we are still going to have to wait even further for the regulations to come after who knows how many consultations, after who knows how much influence the airline industry is going to exert on the minister. And so I ask why, after two years of this Liberal government's mandate, are we still waiting? Why are passengers still waiting? Why is the middle class that this government likes to talk about so much still waiting? Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires. The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transconnet. Madam Speaker, I welcome the opportunity to provide some comment at third reading on uh, Bill C-49. I represent a part of the country that has a lot of rail workers, and I've heard from the workers themselves and, for, and from their union concern about Bill C-49 and what it means for their privacy rights when they're working on trains across Canada, uh, and the ability for employers to pretty much access uh, footage and audio recording of those workers working on trains for just about any purpose. The government says that the real rules are going to come in regulation, but we've seen this as a government that has a pretty cozy relationship with some of the major transportation companies in uh, Canada, and frankly, their track record hasn't, hasn't, hasn't been very good. So I know we've heard already from my honourable colleague about some of the concerns around privacy, which are very real and ought to be addressed in the same way they are for the airline industry, where only the Transportation Safety Board has the authority to look at those recordings. But I wonder if he'd want to expand his comments uh, to, the, to the question of why it is Canadians should have faith in this government to leave it all to regulation without legislating uh, in favour and, and ensuring the privacy protection for railway workers in this country. Our member for Cowich and Malahat Langford. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I, I appreciate my colleague's question. Um, you know, my, my home riding uh, is, is not home to a great railway expanse. Uh, we were certainly trying to make our efforts to expand our rail system on Vancouver Island, but that's a very slow process. And, and I think he raises some excellent points about the, the very real fears and concerns that workers have working in that kind of an environment. And, you know, we were not necessarily opposed to the video and voice recorders, just who was going to use that data and would it, in fact, be protected? And that's why uh, my colleague on the Transportation Committee, the member for Trois-Rivières, 
brought forward that amendment, attempted to, to move that power, that data collection to the Transportation Safety Board, and inexplicably the Liberals didn't agree to it. So I, I wonder why that is. I think another concern too that workers have in the railway is, is the level of fatigue that they suffer from Indeed. being overworked. And I think if we're to prevent these kind of accidents, uh, it shouldn't be sort of an after the fact, like looking at the video and voice recording of how did this crash happen, but why don't we look at worker health and safety? Are they being overworked? Here, here. And, and do they have the safe mechanisms to actually return to their family every night safe in a safe and sound manner? Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is my duty pursuant to Standing Order 38 to inform